And yes, this is the hottest news of Gamergate 2.0, and that is, of course, understanding the agents of Sweet Baby Inc. as the rabbit hole grows deeper. Now, when this was first exposed, folks, it was just Sweet Baby Inc., it was just Kim Belair and Kiss Kin... Kiss Kindred. <laughs> Chris Kindred, who is, of course, a black tranny demon. It's not offensive if it's true. And the truth is reality-based. But it has evolved into multiple companies, multiple personalities. Whether it's Alyssa Mercante of Kotaku, that's actually how you pronounce her name. Uh, whether it's other companies such as uh, Weird Ghosts, Baby Ghosts, which sounds like it was named by Planned Parenthood. Uh, Gamma Space, which looks like a Heaven's Gate ripoff. And new companies as well that have recently emerged by the names of Hit Detection and Cozy Comet Games. In fact, folks, Cozy Comet Games is so new that when me and Will of the Fans discovered it and its website, it hasn't even finished making its website. We caught, <laughs> we caught the fuckers in the act. It's like stumbling upon a xenomorph hive as it's being built. These front companies are being made. These new enterprises are being forged so that the sweet baby ink fuckers can go from one platform to another. It just goes to show, folks, we can't target companies. They don't work. They just create new companies. You have to target the personalities from which these companies are formed, and that's why they're screaming, harassment campaign, far-right conspiracy theory. You know, they tar us all with a, with a broad brush, and then they move on, abandon the, the controversial sites, and then create these new sites. So we have to learn from the mistakes of the original Gamergate, targeting uh, companies instead of personalities. And we, us, we must also learn from the original Gamergate not to go after fine folks and fellow creators unless they are blood-sucking financial opportunists like the Daily Wire. So, uh, yeah. Uh, third, do you know anything about this situation, or am I a crazy conspiracy theorist who <laughs> should be hung from a lamppost? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've seen Cozy Comet Games as well. It's one of the companies that received a grant from Baby Ghosts or whatever the hell they're called. Yep. Weird yep. Baby, Baby Ghosts. They're Weird Ghost, the Baby Ghost. Yeah, they're literally the same company. It received money from that. Uh, it all goes back to it, it's weird. Like it all goes back to Holoka, right? Aileen Holoka, the yeah. brother of Alec Holoka, who got me too by Zoe Quinn, and then yeah. all of his business partners dropped him, and then he killed himself, and then his yep. sister inherited his company, all his money, millions of dollars, and now she's distributing all this uh, his the inheritance, I guess you'd say, to mm -hmm. all these like communist and leftist corporations and uh, individuals. It's crazy. That's the. I, I it said like, it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's real. It's real. No, it's all there. It is. It's real. all there. Just follow the money. It's all real, folks. It's as real as is real. It's all documented. It's all there. This is a verifiable conspiracy. And what a way to honor the legacy of your brother, to then give his hard work and his legacy to the very people who drove him to doing himself in. That is communism to a T. And that's, that's a the kind of people. family member. Yes. Hey, do, you, do you want to hear an extremely hot take? Sure. It, I reckon that, I don't, like, Aline says mm -hmm. that during Holoka, when he was suicidal, when he got me too'd by Zoe, she says she had contact with him. At no point does she say with this contact that she actually tried to talk him out of suicide. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if Aileen Holoka pushed her brother towards suicide mm. so she could inherit his company and his uh, and his money and his life savings so that she could fund her like leftist projects that she'd already well, been involved in since the, 2012. These progressive ponces have no principles, ladies and gentlemen. That would not surprise me in the slightest third. Now, I don't know if Raquel has heard about the Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, scandal, oh. But uh, this is quite a deep rabbit hole, Raquel. Are you sure you can handle it? 
I heard a little bit of it, and I have to say, one of the employees from C Baby, Baby Inc. Mm -hmm. When uh, Kiria Toriyama passed away, mm. they had they had to put their two cents in and saying they didn't they didn't like Dragon uh, Dragon Ball or Akira type Akira Toriyama's work, and called Mr. Popo a racist. Mm. Mm. Like, what? Which is silly because Mr. Popo isn't even that origin. Hmm, exactly. Mm. And <laughs> no wonder there are so many fine folks and fellow creators who are quite animated in regards to this scandal, who are quite upset, and who are, to put it mildly, um, angry to the point of being past PG-13. Um, yeah, like, you know, he had to be a major douchebag to just, like, hmm. do that on the day of his passing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's a great example, though, Raquel, of the kind of people we're dealing with, who have no morals, no principles, uh, are willing to take blood money, with the example of Alec, Holoka, and Infinite Ammo in corporate, which finances weird ghosts and baby ghosts. And of all the companies to finance, it's called Ghosts, which is another evil nod. Uh, Dante puts it very well. Uh, they These people are evil. They're malevolent creatures. Their ideology possesses them, and then they mutilate themselves. They mutilate others, whether it's physically or mentally. We are really dealing with a demonic force. Whether you're one of the faithful or not, you cannot deny that the way these people uh, spread around and infect everything is poisonous. That's why I call them poisonous pests, because they ruin all our franchises. And if you stand in their way, they will drive you to madness and self-deletion, as the Holoka example explains. That's why you have folks like Third who really put the based in reality based, because Third especially, uh, recognizes that these fuckers have no morals and principles. That's why third, especially, is very controversial. And I try to, uh, <laughs> I try to manifest that on, on reality based. And, and some folks are like, this guy is very controversial. And I'm like, do you want to meet third for the second, especially if you're an African American? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my take. But for, um, for this point, I really wanted to highlight the agents that push this nonsense. The Kim Belairs, uh, the David Bedards, those two co-founded Sweet Baby Inc. in early 2018. And in the space of six years, they've gone from nowhere to everywhere, infecting so many great franchises. Whether it's Alan Wake or God of War or Assassin's Creed or many of the many indie games, just bribing their way through, terrorizing their way through, and just destroying everything in their path, including Saints Row, which doesn't exist anymore. Violation is dead <laughs> now. Aww. Three, three games. Hmm? I love the third game, yeah. Hmm. And I love Assassin's Creed games as well. So, so if you, folks, if you're a Saints Row fan, Blame Sweet Baby Inc. for ruining your franchise. We're never going to get a Saints Row game ever again now. Never. Because uh, Embracer Group, who own all the companies related to Saints Row, they're not going to bring it back. They're never going to bring it back. And they're not going to sell it, because who's going to buy it and rebuild it? An indie title, which then gets infected? Yeah, I was going to say, hint, hint. With that and Grand Theft Auto Five being around 15 years, there's a gigantic opening for another company to do something similar right now. Exactly. And hopefully not be ESG related. Exactly. Well, I'm just assuming like, if uh, GTA 6 doesn't uh, get uh, delayed. Most likely it will, Raquel, because of the big budget and because of the fact that you've got folks like Sweet Baby Inc. and their ilk, their ilk mainly, uh, worming their way through it. You know, diversity, inclusivity, equity. Equity is the worst. Sneaky bastards. Using a financial oh. term? They're using a financial term. Communists using a financial term for their agenda is legitimately terrifying. 
<laughs> but uh, I, I will say in regards to this, uh, Kim Belair is a classic example of an indoctrinated individual. I try to use this reference a lot because I'm playing Mass Effect again. These people suffer from something akin to Reaper indoctrination, which kind of sounds like uh, Avengers PC fan when it's blowing at maximum. But uh, this, this kind of Reaper indoctrination of these people, it drives them insane to the point of pushing their agenda. And Sweet Baby Inc.'s a great example of this. Nowhere to everywhere in six years, infesting everything, and causing this great controversy with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League being the straw that broke the camel's back. That's my view in regards to to them. I don't know if any of you guys know much about that game and how utterly awful it was. Has anyone played it? I haven't um, played it. I just heard it sucked. Hmm. I heard it sucked. Um... The latest Saints were... The uh, combat. Uh, no, 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 no. Suicide Squad. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't want to. <laughs> Let's see for. Uh, I guess the uh, combat moves could be better. And also, uh, mm -hmm. spoiler. So anyone's listening, spoiler ahead. Uh, so if you don't want to hear the spoil. Mute your headphones now. In three, two, one. All right. The we the. Uh, disrespected the batman from arkham asylum was just horrible mm. it's like that's not how it's supposed to go that's not batman that was awful yeah okay spoilers over oh, Good. i'd also Good. i'd also like to say arkham city is one of my favorite games of all time mm. from yeah great game great 2008 game. or so whenever that was and mm. um yeah sweet baby it's amazing just how much chemical dependence they seem to have on pessimism and hatred and attention yep. and they're loving it right now they love being the focus of attention and they will openly it's the equivalent of someone slashing you across the arm with a knife and when you say hey what the hell they go what are you a baby so what get over get over it and they're just constantly kicking gamers in the teeth over and well, over and over not not according to uh sweet baby inks co-founder david bedard who recently put a post on linkedin criticizing the, quote, harassment campaign, unquote, on him and his company, labeling detractors as uh, far right. My goodness, a term so overused, it's absolutely irrelevant. I mean, last time I checked, folks, fascists would not talk to brownies or even pseudo brownies like our good friend Creativity's Avenger. I happen to know that because we had a good talk on Nerd Wars' channel. The fact that they label us these nonsense terms uh, really demeans those who have suffered as a result of these extreme ideologies. And it's a great way of undermining the seriousness of said ideologies and what they have done throughout history. Um, um. At this point, pretty much anyone who has a normal way of thinking and is not in the echo chamber is far right, according mm. to them. Exactly. And, you know, we, we all know they're activists with the under the guise of, oh, yeah, we're creators now. We're they're just they're pushing ideologies. They don't care if they ruin franchises. They can't create. They can only destroy. Exactly. And that's what we've seen. Mm. <laughs> they you want to look at it. Exactly, third. But if you want to look at a recent example of these fuckers uh, destroying a country, just look at Haiti. Great example. They're eating each other in that country because of embracing ideas that inspire political correctness, that inspire social justice, and that inspire identity politics. It really leads to, to chaos and destruction everywhere it goes especially in the third world for some reason. But uh, yeah, another person I wanted to talk about was Alyssa Mercante. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's it's quite an odd name. Get rid of the E and you've got Mercant. Um, she should put a H there and just call herself Merchant because she looks like one. Yeah, this woman swoops in from Kotaku to try and save the day. White Knight for Sweet Baby Ink. 
and infiltrate a Discord server in the worst way possible. Hello, fellow gamers, just like Matt Walsh. Hello, fellow gamers, I'm one of you. Now tell me everything about you, your address, uh, uh, what you believe, and your real picture. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. Establishment puppets, regime puppets who can't really thrive in the circles of, a, of content creation. Even amongst folks like us, and none of us are prominent creators who have stood the test of time. But uh, yeah, yeah, does anyone know about Alyssa Macante? She, she looks a bit like a lesbian, if you ask me. Yeah, I've read the story. She basically, of course, was blaming everyone that joined the Steam group, which last I checked was around a quarter of a million people. And she, yeah, anyone that says hello, fellow anything, instantly have your guard up. That's, <laughs> that's just weird. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, that's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, she apparently answered one of the critics after reading the article. You can't be racist to white people, which I just made a video on that because da -da, I happen to be white and black. Experience racism both ways. And guess mm -hmm. what? It's exactly the same feeling. Surprise. Mm -hmm. That's why I called um, Avenger pseudo because that's that's a nice pseudo. way of saying partial. Um, but uh, yeah. Try your best, my good man. I'm sure you'll go far as a rising star. But, uh, yeah, we, we see this more and more now. And it's very good to highlight the problem. The more creators there are out there highlighting the problem, the more a solution can be found. And that solution is usually exposing the problem and not just highlighting it, but gathering like-minded people together. And uh, the third step is to be the change you want to see which usually means dogpiling these motherfuckers to oblivion before <laughs> they dogpile us to oblivion. You know, good old 20th century way of thinking. Us versus them, uh, or to put it in a, well, tougher way, kill or be Hi, killed. Oh. oh, my goodness. Hypno's in the chat. <laughs> shouldn't, Star. shouldn't you be playing, what's it called again? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Or is your system so strong you're playing the game while commenting because you have 52 hands? Um, <laughs> I have to avoid that game on purpose because I will lose half a month to that if I start it. Damn. Damn, you must have deep pockets, Avenger. We could use a sponsor on Reality Pay. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about my time, not, not the oh, money, just because okay. I'm trying to be a content creator. If I'm playing that, I'm not going to be mm. creating content. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you all this, folks. Hypnotic recently passed 35,000 subscribers. Hey, and, congrats. And yeah, I, always, nice. Nice. I, always, I always regret the day I passed him over as a rising star. Did you know, <laughs> folks, Hypnotic... Well, you think he sucked. You're like, oh, this guy's not going anywhere. Come on, this guy's not a rising star. Yep. <laughs> Hypnotic, <laughs> I got I to gotta say, I really enjoy your intro animation. I think that's one of the best on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Nerd Wars made it. Uh, of course you do. Nerd Wars is epic. I've been watching heaps of Nerd Wars lately because he's literally got the best coverage of Gaming Gate too. Oh, Badger. Like the, guy's, mm. the, guy's, the guy's well onto it. He's awesome, yeah. He's and a great it's great guy. to see Angry Badger, who is Nerd Wars' co-host on, on their respective show, a, a great duo if ever there was one. Yeah, they're and salt they, and pepper. Yep. And if you ever need a third wheel to mess everything up, you know where to find me. Uh, <laughs> What about a third for the second wheel? Oh, get it? Yeah. Third for the yeah. second? That's my YouTube name. That's, Got that, it. That's certainly a way to uh, slip in your channel name. That's certainly <laughs> reality based. But uh, there, there we go. We can all, we can all uh, try it. But Dante, to answer your your question, I think a great way of of stopping that is to have. The, the process of going from being a content creator to a creator enterprise, then to a creator-based corporation. That's what I really like about the Ripperverse. It's because if they become a big corpo rat site, thankfully they're not, they're only a few years old though, if they do become that, then their support instantly vanishes and they yep, collapse. Yep, yep. And I, I think that's, say, that's what we need to do. But please, Avenger, speak, speak. 
the greater majorities of corporation, they might last a decent while as far as their quality, you know, something like Blizzard, but eventually the corporate structure will eat away at creativity. It's just mm. the antithesis of it. It's soul sucking. They don't look at it as, hey, this is Star Wars A New Hope. They say, this is our newest Star Wars product. How is it doing? What's mm. the performance? You know, the typical corporate stuff. So the instant uh, you see HR get in a company, count the years. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, no, HR shouldn't exist. Uh, that should not be a thing. But anyways, I'm going to go for about 10 minutes. If you, I'll be back shortly. Oh, uh, okay. I had something uh, come up, but I'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right. Sorry. Well, hopefully we're still live in 10 minutes because the show's a 90-minute one. Don't worry, third. We all know you have a secret girlfriend. But uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs>